Welcome to all you Googlers out there. And a very warm welcome to, um, to Lenny Ravitch, who is, um, came all the way from Israel and is the author of uh, a great book, actually, which I read a few years ago, which is called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to Enlightenment. Obviously, he is, uh, in addition to being a psychologist and a very impactful speaker, he's also a humorist. And uh, we were guaranteed uh, by Avi that we're going to laugh and that we're going to enjoy ourselves and that we are all going to leave smiling. And hopefully, by leaving this room smiling, we will then have a positive influence on everyone else in the office, and we will all go home and smile, and then we will have a positive impact on our families. Pay it forward. And yeah, we will pay it forward. So uh, I look forward to laughing and smiling and feeling a little bit better. Um, so Lenny, over to you, and thank you very much for coming to, uh, to Google. We're very happy to My have pleasure. you. My pleasure. Uh, yes, thank you very much for coming. Um, before I begin, I would like to ask a question. How many of you would like to have a more flourishing life, um, a more joyful life, um, open mind, uh, feeling good, looking good, live longer, live stronger? If there's anybody here like that, would you raise your hand? Okay, you almost forgot. <laughs> How many people would not like to have a more flourishing life, live longer, live stronger, look good, feel good? How many people would not? Okay, I just wanted to check if I was in the right place. <laughs> because I'm going to talk to you about all those things and how to achieve them. I will be giving you some things which we call attitudes that I've discovered along my journey. But first, I'd like to tell you a little story about how this all began. I was working in uh, Tel Aviv, in Israel, uh, at the uh, Ministry of Education, I was an inspector, uh, a supervisor of teachers. If anybody doesn't know what an inspector is, it's a person that used to be a teacher and then decided not to work anymore. In 1996, I went out on pension. And since I've been out on pension, I've been having nightmares. I keep dreaming I go back to the Ministry of Education. And I set out on a journey of my own to find out what is the one thing that all people in the world want? What is the most valuable thing in our lives? Which we don't, probably don't think about too much. So I started sending out mails, uh, Facebook, I met strangers on planes and asked this question, what's the most important thing to you in your life? What is the most valuable thing to you? And what do you think the most common answers were? Let me hear what you think. What were the most common answers? I'm sorry? Being happy. Being happy. What is your name? Susie. Susie? Susie. 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 Tulsi. 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 Thank you, Tulsi. Okay, anybody else? Health. Again? Health. 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 Who said that? What is your name? Priya. Priya? Priya. Clear. Priya. Priya. It's very clear, Claire. Uh, being healthy, okay? Anybody else? My family. Ag again? My family. 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 Your name? No. Okay. <laughs> I was going to get you a family. <laughs> okay, so we have happy, we have healthy, we have family. Anybody else? Meaningful relationships. Meaningful relationship. And you are? Uh, Lauren. Lauren. And that's Alex. Okay. I almost got you confused. Okay. It's all right. Okay, may I ask you a question? Let's say the most important thing in life to me is family, and I get to have a wonderful, strong, functional, healthy family. I'd like you to fill in this one word in a sentence. If I have all that, I will be a mm person. Happy. Uh, somebody said health. Yes? If I have health, perfect health, wake up in the morning, perfect health, every day of my life, I will be a mm person. Happy. Okay, who said um, happy? Happy. Okay. 
what else did we have? We had a meaningful, meaningful relationship. If I have a real meaningful relationship, a long-lasting meaningful relationship, I will be a... It's a trick question. <laughs> trick question, isn't it? Uh, fulfilled. Fulfilled. And if I am fulfilled, I will be... Happy. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the one thing we all want is this thing called happiness or joy or positive feelings. <coughs> now, um, of course we want it. How, how many people here are parents? Okay, <coughs> how many people here are children of parents? <laughs> if I ask you as a parent or any parent in the world, what do you want most for your children? I want them to be? Happy. Happy. Okay, we keep going back to the same subject. We all want that. I'm going to tell you why and how to achieve it some ways, the awareness at least. Uh, they uh, asked uh, John Lennon, anybody remember John Lennon? Yep. When he was in grammar school, John, what do you <coughs> want to be when you grow up? And his answer was, I want to be happy. So the school officials decided that John Lennon didn't understand the question. <laughs> Later on, John Lennon said that the school officials didn't understand life. So we all want this thing called happiness, and what is it? It's something we don't talk about much. They don't teach you much in school or at home about what the word feeling is. It's a feeling. It's a positive feeling. And what does this positive feeling do for us? Why do we want it so badly? Number one, it not only feels good, but according to research, uh, Dr. Bernie Siegel's book, Love, Medicine, and Miracles, anybody read it? Okay, he says that as a general <coughs> rule, happy people don't get sick. You with me on this? Okay, it protects your health. Being happy, being in a positive state of mind, happy people don't get sick. That's what he says. According to Barbara Fredrickson, and I recommend that you read her book called Positivity, says people who have this positive feeling, people who are feeling this happiness, or this optimism, or this hope, live longer, live stronger. Remember in the beginning I asked you who wants to have a, to li a live longer, live stronger, look good, she says, uh, th this is all research stuff. I mean, this has done, been done by her and her research in her book. So we all want this positive feeling because it gives us health. It gives us long life. It makes us look good. It makes us feel good. It helps us in relationships. It helps us in our family, in all kinds of relationships. I would like to give you five attitudes because thinking positively is not going to do it. You know, I once saw a movie called American dream or something where this woman is in a car with, and she's putting on her tape, these po empowering tapes, I'm a strong woman I'm type thing. Kidding. And she's over and over going, I'm a strong woman, I'm a strong woman, I'm a strong woman. <laughs> so you know, all these, these uh, positive uh, thinking doesn't really help. What really helps is an attitude. And what is an attitude? It's a way of looking at life. Because everything you think and everything you feel has uh, an effect on the chemistry in your body. Okay? If you're feeling stressed out, if you're feeling fear, if you're feeling anxiety or anger, your body is producing a chemical called cortisol. And cortisol is a poison. Enough days of cortisol and you could end up with a thing called stress-related illnesses. And I don't care what your diet is and how much you jog. This will get you. Uh, if you're feeling good, if you're feeling positive, if you're feeling this happy feeling, what happens is your body produces endorphins. May I have a drink? Is it okay? Thank you. Endorphins lower stress, protect your immune system, and even strengthen your immune system, making you strong against colds, against the sicknesses and diseases. You look much better. You feel much better. So here are the five um, attitudes I'd like to know if you are willing to take at least one or two. Who's willing to commit to taking one or two of these attitudes back with you out of this room and into your life and maybe pe playing forward? Raise your hand. Okay, the rest of you can get out. <laughs> okay, the first thing is, the first attitude is, let's talk about the worst thing you can do. The worst thing you can do is take yourself seriously. Okay, seriousness is a disease. Dis-ease It's not funny. <laughs> My father told me when I was a kid, he said to me, Lenny, he used to call me Lenny, because that's my name. 
This side is a lot more intelligent than this side, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he said, Lenny, don't take yourself seriously. Nobody else does. I said, thanks, Dad. Anyway, one of the things is that you can do, and keep this in mind, this is an awareness session, because only in one hour I can't go boom, you're changed, but you can get an awareness. And that is, at every opportunity, laugh at yourself and breathe. By laughing at yourself, you're not belittling yourself, you're not lowering your self-esteem, you're doing the opposite. You're saying to the world, I'm not perfect, I made bloopers, mistakes, defects, I have addictions, I laugh at them, and I accept myself, and that's the way it is. Uh, it, it is the highest form of humor that you can possibly do, and try to think about this every single day of your life. Anytime you make a mistake or you did something wrong, instead of saying, oh, stupid, say, hey, this is fun. Let me give you an example. When I was young, a young man growing up, I grew up in the United States, and I had a dream. And that dream was I wanted to be a radio and television announcer. You know, the guy that sits in front of the camera and delivers the news, like uh, News Asia, whatever it is. And so I went to school in Boston uh, to a school called Emerson College where they taught theater. And one of the subjects I, I learned was uh, broadcasting, where they taught you how to speak like a a radio announcer, an American radio announcer, and you had to speak something like this. And now, back to our show, The Flying Chicken. I practiced this so much, and I got into this voice so much I couldn't get out. It was embarrassing. I would go to a party, hello, John, how are you? Go home, hello, darling, how about a hug? I finally got a job at um, WAPI-TV and radio in Birmingham, Alabama. Anybody know where Birmingham, Alabama is? It's down south, next to Georgia, Louisiana, Texas. And uh, I was very excited. Uh, my first day at work, I sat in front of the uh, camera. Uh, I, had to, I had to go on the air at 8 o'clock. It is now 1 minute to 8. The lights come down in the studio, and a light goes up on the wall on the, on the door, it says, on the air, and then there's a red light on the uh, camera, and the camera comes in slowly, and there's this woman who has earphones, and she goes like this to me. <clears throat> and she points to me, and then the music starts, you know, the music, the broadcasting music, da 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 And I looked at the camera, and I said this, I said, good evening, and here, you know that voice, and here is the news. Read to you by Leonard Ravitch. Oh, I was delighted. I had achieved my dream. I was, had a dream job, you know. The next day I came to the studio and I noticed that people's reactions to me were a little different. The people were going like this, like that. What happened? When I was receiving mail and telephone calls, people wanted to speak to Leonard Garbage. I said, Ravitch, they heard garbage. I was getting uh, 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 telephone calls what people want to speak to Leonard Rubbish, <coughs> Rabbit, uh, is Mr. Rabbit there, you know? One person even uh, sent a mail uh, to Leonard Ravage, R-A-V-A-G-E, which means to, I looked it up, it means to rape and pillage. <laughs> and I am completely innocent of all wrongdoing. So I got, I got an hour, you know, before I go on, and I'm nervous, and the cortisol, you know, I'm under stress. What do I do? So I thought, I'll change my name. Uh, a Leonard part, I'll keep the Leonard part, that's okay, but I gotta change the garbage. <laughs> okay, uh, so Leonard Rag, you know, something with a R. A. Ra uh, Reynolds, no. Leonard Roberts, no. Leonard, I got it. Raymond. Hey, that's cool, huh? Leonard Raymond? Okay, so I went to everybody's office. I'm no longer Leonard Ravitch. I'm Leonard Raymond. Everybody looked up and said, thank God. <laughs> Got in front of the camera, one minute to eight, lights come down, light goes up on the door, says on the air. The uh, television camera comes in red light and there's this uh, producer who goes like this to me. And I hear the music, da 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 And it happened just like this. I looked at the camera. <clears throat> And I said in that broadcasting voice, good evening, and here is the news, read to you by Leonard Ra uh, 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 
I became the first radio and television announcer in the history of the United States who forgot his name <laughs> during a live broadcast. But you have to be spontaneous because it's airtime and it costs a lot of money, so you have to be, you know, say something right away. So I said, I forgot my name, but here's the news. <laughs> Washington. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I can see you laughing and hear you. The thing is, are you laughing at me or are you laughing with me? Because when you laugh at yourself, when you make fun of yourself, you bring people closer to you. It's called intimacy. Uh, my interpretation of intimacy is into me see. And the more of you I show of me and I show you my mistakes, I bring you closer to me. And this makes for meaningful relationships. So the first tool is make so, uh, laugh at yourself and breathe. Now I want you to take something back. I don't want you just to experience this in your mind. I want you to experience it in your body. So we're going to do something right now, an experiment. Now experiments are scary. And why are they scary? Because you leave your comfort zone. Because you're going to do something that you don't know. So you have two choices. One is not to take part in this experiment. The other is to walk into the fear. Because when you are afraid and do it anyway, you learn something new about yourself. So you have a choice. If you're, if you're uncomfortable and you don't want to do it, don't do it. If you're uncomfortable and you still want to do it, remember that you're going to learn something. Those people who are going to participate with me do this. Raise your finger in the air. And then you bring it down over here in front of you and you do this. Now in about 30 seconds you're going to be laughing at yourself. You see, you're already doing it. Okay, so smile. And when I count to three, I'm going to say one, two, three. You go, <laughs> okay, one, two, three, and. <laughs> one, two, three, and. <laughs> one, two, three, and. <laughs> okay, make believe you've got a flower in your hand, in your fingers. Take the flower, put it under your nose. Breathe in very deeply and say, ah. Breathe in deeply and say, ah. Ah. Okay, so we have something now, a tool, to use when you're in a stressful situation. Or if you see somebody in the office taking themselves too seriously, you go like this. <laughs> okay. How many of you have driver's license? Okay, how many of you have been in a, in a traffic jam? How many people don't particularly like traffic jams that can be stressful? Okay, this is what you do in a traffic jam, okay? Everybody together, even if you have a car or not. Put your hand on the wheel, the steering wheel, that is. Not that wheel, this, this wheel. And not the other hand, this, just one hand. You're, and you're in a traffic jam right now, okay? And you take your finger and you put it here. And you say after me, I'm in a traffic jam. <laughs> one, two, three, and. I'm in a traffic jam. <laughs> one, two, three, and. I'm in a traffic jam. <laughs> One, two, three. I'm in a traffic jam. <laughs> take your flower. Don't take your hand off the wheel. Don't look around. People will be looking at you. And breathe in very deeply. Say, ah, ah. One more time. Take a deep breath. Ah. OK, take your hand off the wheel now. We're back in the room. And you have a tool. Whenever, time, whenever you get stressed or anybody in your house, your child, your wife, your husband, your friend, you can always take out the flower. You can always point your finger, laugh, and breathe deeply. Bre breathing deeply is just as important as laughing. Before we go on, I want to ask you if there's anybody here who feels any differently than you did when you first came in. If there's any difference in your feeling. Just check your feelings. I want to explain to men what feelings are. Men don't know what feelings are. <laughs> this is the truth. Men, feelings are things that go on inside. Uh, okay, uh, anybody feeling anything differently than you did when you first came in? Yes, what are you feeling? A little lighter. A little lighter, a little lighter. And anybody else? Yes? I think I'm more aware of uh, what I'm feeling, or more aware of what I am thinking. 
You're more aware now of what you're thinking and feeling. Could you tell me, if you don't mind, what you're thinking and feeling? How you can feel better? Yeah, or, or how I can manage stress, manage group ups, manage mistakes better. Um. Okay. And all that happened within 10, 15 seconds. Light feeling, you get that? That's what we're talking about that positivity, that thing that makes you feel good, that thing that protects your health, the things that makes you look good and that makes you uh, stronger. Okay? 15 seconds every day, a couple of times a day and you've got that light feeling, you've got that good feeling. Before I go on, I'd like a nice feeling too, so please give me a round of applause. <laughs> How many people here have heard of a person by the name of Steve Jobs? <laughs> I guess you have. Well, bless you. I, I, I suggest that you go into Google. <laughs> Google, <laughs> search, YouTube, <laughs> and uh, he's got a speech, a 2005, a commencement speech, Steve Jobs to the um, graduating class of uh, Stanford University. I want you to listen to that because it's very inspiring. Anybody uh, heard that speech before? Do you remember uh, the last two sentences of that speech? Stay hungry. Stay foolish. Stay foolish. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Now, stay hungry, I guess it means to be never really satisfied completely until you get to your destination, whatever that is, or satisfy your passion. But stay foolish really stunned me, and I'll tell you why, when I heard it. Because my parents, my teachers all told me, Leonard, be serious. You're not going to get anywhere in this world if you're not serious. You're not going to succeed being a clown. So I want to do something right now to have you experience what it feels like to do something foolish. And why did Steve Jobs say that, and what is that going to give us? So I have to look out into the audience and ask you this. How many people here in this audience speak a language other than English, Hebrew, or Mandarin? What language do you speak? What language do you speak? Uh, Portuguese and Japanese. Portuguese and? Japanese. What do you speak better, Portuguese or Japanese? Uh, Okay, but you can speak Japanese, okay? And your name again is? Daniel. Daniel. Daniel, would you mind coming up here? Have a nice round of applause for Daniel. Yeah. Daniel, stand over here so you'll be closer to the microphone. Yeah. First of all, thank you very much. For coming. This is a surprise for you, isn't it? It is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're talking about feelings, so what does it feel like to stand up in front of your friends here? Uh, I'm used to it already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm used to it. Uh, <laughs> It really surprises me because uh, there, was a, uh, there was a research uh -huh. done. What's the, scar the, the, the question was, what is the scariest thing in the world? Uh, that, what do you think it is? They thought the scariest thing in the world was the fear of death. The fear of death is number two. The number one fear is... Is that being on stage? Yes, speaking in public. With okay. landing next to you. With landing. Yeah, right. <laughs> speaking in public is a fear worse than death. So the next time you go to a funeral, just remember, the guy giving the last speech over the grave would rather be <laughs> in the coffin. So we're going to give uh, Daniel a nice round of applause. Daniel, uh, I want you to do something for me. We're going to play a scene. Um, can you give me, just explain to me a little bit of a stressful moment at work. Just one little stressful moment. Okay. Someone didn't clean the microfiche. Somebody what? <laughs> Someone ate their stuff and then they just left it in the micro kitchen. Okay, they left it in and there. And I was upset. So okay. Come on, okay, you're upset. Yeah. So I'm, I'm the one who did it. Okay. <laughs> now you come to me and, and you are upset. Yeah. And I want you to talk to me and be upset in Portuguese. In Portuguese. Yes. Okay. Now why Portuguese? Because I don't know Portuguese. Okay. But I'm going to be foolish. And I'm going to speak Portuguese gibberish to you, <laughs> but please don't laugh, okay? You're going to answer me as if you really understand me, seriously, and then I'll answer you as if I really understand you, like okay. me and my wife, okay? okay. <laughs> because what happens when you, when you get foolish, you go into the right brain, 
And when you go into the right brain, there's a thing called empathy. And you start to understand each other even without understanding each other because you go into a place of understanding that is not logical. Am I making myself clear? Well, you'll see in just a moment, okay? You come to my office and you're really upset. And this is in Portuguese, okay? Uh, I'm, in, I'm on my computer right now. Act one, uh, scene one, take one, action. Yeah. Uh, Lenny, então, não, não limpaste a cozinha outra vez? Estou chateado contigo. Disse eu, eu não vou ter que ir para a cara. Estás sempre a dizer isso e fazes a mesma coisa tudo. Oh, sim, estou a limpar a cara. E aí, estou a pôr o ponto de limpar a cara. Não, 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 tens de ir buscar, vai limpar. Tu vais tirar o tom, hein? Diz-me, estou a pôr o ponto de limpar a cara. Mas... Não, 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 Let's give him a round of applause. It was great. I would like you to have this copy of my book. Come to me later and I want to sign it for you and give you a signature. One thing before you go, I want you to know something. How many people here know Daniel? Raise your hand. You don't know Daniel. There's one thing about Daniel you don't know. Daniel was in a great, cruel race. The cruelest race in nature. He was in the great sperm race. There were millions of sperm all trying to get to that same egg, but Daniel wouldn't give up. Because only the fastest, best, and, 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 and healthiest and strongest get to the egg first. I'm so sorry that so many of your brothers and sisters died along the way. Do you have a, do you have a car? I, I don't. Do you have a motorcycle, bicycle? I have a bicycle. Put this on your bicycle, and that, that you'll be foolish. Uh, it, it says, I won the sperm race. If you're foolish enough to put this on your bicycle, uh, you'll take Steve Jobs uh, seriously, okay? Thank you, Lance. Thank you very much. Okay, nice round of applause. Okay, so what do we get out of being um, a little bit foolish? Uh, I can't leave and come over and talk to you in gibberish because it won't pick me up, the mic won't pick me up. So I'm just gonna have to ask you. We were foolish for a while, and Daniel, for one thing, was very creative. It was a very creative moment. It was a moment that we really connected, even though we didn't understand the language. What did you get out of being foolish? Why did you think that Steve Jobs wants us to be foolish? Anybody feel anything or think anything? Or did anything happen to you while we were doing this? What did you get out of it? We lost. Sorry? We lost. Okay, a good laugh. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, so we got a laugh out of it. Can you think of anything more important than a laugh in your life? It's pretty important. <laughs> okay, so now we have two attitudes. One is to laugh at yourself and breathe. And the other one is stay hungry, stay, stay foolish. You do foolish things. As a matter of fact, talk gibberish or just do something foolish like putting a little sticker on your car or your bicycle that says, I won the sperm race. And you've done it. And you feel better and you have a good laugh. Before I go on, may I have a round of applause, please? Um, about uh, 11 years ago, I was sitting in a restaurant uh, of a, a hotel that I was staying at and the waitress was taking my order and at the end she said will that be all sir and I said yes and she said thank you and left now where I come from I never heard a waiter or waitress say to me thank you by taking my order never happened so I was curious and so when she came back I said can I ask you a question is it the policy of this hotel uh, for you to say to a guest, thank you for taking my order. And she said, no, that's what I got from my home. 
We were taught that if I have a chance to serve someone, it's an opportunity for me to get closer to God. I was stunned. She said, why did I say thank you to you? Because you gave me an opportunity to get closer to God by asking me to serve you. Now, why did this have me in such a shock? Because it's the first time in my life I had ever met a person who looks at service as something godly or holy. That actually helping another person or serving another person is, is a holy act. But you know what she did for me? I thought about it, and she did it for you too. She gave us what our purpose and mission in life is. Our pur purpose and mission in life is to serve. Think about what you do every day. It's service. Okay? If, 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 if our purpose and mission in life is to improve other people's lives. That's the whole reason around Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. It's all about improving people's lives. That's all they wanted to do. So our mission and purpose in life is what? It's our meaning in life. Everybody needs a meaning. Let me just tell you how important meaning is in your life. If anybody's ever read a book called um, Man's Search for Meaning by Dr. Uh, Frankel, Victor Frankel, he says that in order to have meaning in our lives, it gives us the reason to live, the reason to live, to have meaning. Okay, And if your meaning is service, if your meaning is helping other people, improving other people's lives, that gives you a meaning in life. And I want to just tell you one little story about having meaning. And all of you, before you leave today, I want you to make that decision. My meaning in life is, and finish the sentence. And I'll tell you how it's done. Across the street from my house, my apartment, I live in Tel Aviv, uh, there is a uh, dry cleaning shop dry cleaner, I bring my clothes there, and there's an elderly man. When I say elderly man, I mean my age, which is like extremely mature. <laughs> and um, I, I, I have a show that I do in Tel Aviv. I have a, a show at the theater. And I gave them two tickets, and I said, come to my show and enjoy yourself. They came to my show, and when I brought my clothes in the next day, they said, we were at your show. And the man said to me, you know that you are performing a mitzvah. If anybody doesn't know what a mitzvah is, in the Jewish religion, a mitzvah is doing God's command. It's a command from God. He said, you're doing a mitzvah because you're making people laugh and you're teaching them how to be happy. This is a mitzvah. And he said to me, you know what? I'm also performing a mitzvah. I clean your clothes so that you can go on stage and do your mitzvah. Did you see what that man did? that I want you to do, in that one second, he split second, you know, instead of saying, I gotta clean these clothes, I gotta wash these, look at all this laundry here, my God, what am I gonna do, I gotta, you know, I thought I do this all day long, I do this, what meaning does my life have? He gave himself that meaning, that moment, I clean your clothes so that you can go on stage clean and you do your mitzvah and I do mine by cleaning your clothes, we're both doing God's command. So please, before you leave here today, Make up your mind what your meaning in life is. My mission and purpose, and I think it's yours too, is service. It's improving other people's lives any way you can. That's the way to happiness. That's the way to feel good. That's the way to positivity. And before I go on, I'd like a nice round of applause. Okay, I think we're doing okay. Um, when I was younger, my father told me... Uh, Lenny, live every day as if it's your last. Because one day you're going to be right. This was the best advice I ever got. Live every day as if it's your last because one day you're going to be right. Because when you live every day as if it's your last, you're giving life an some kind of urgency. You know we're not all going to live forever. We're here temporarily. What we have is a temporary gift. You know, this thing we call life. It's fun, but it's over. And it's only temporary. So when you look in the mirror and you say, today's my last day, let me give you an example. How I do it. I was in Turkey 
with my wife. And we were in a resort area called Boudroom. It's not bedroom. <laughs> and she's talking about going to Pamukkala. Let's go to Pamukkala. I said, what's Pamukkala? She said, I read all about it. It's a beautiful place. You must come. It's 12 hours by Turkish bus there and 12 hours by Turkish bus back. I said, sweetheart, you go. I'm staying here. She said, I am going, but why aren't you coming? And I said, because today's my last day. And I don't feel like dying on a bus. <laughs> so she said, where do you want to die today? Great question. We should all be asking ourselves that. So she said, where do you want to die today? I said, next to the pool. <laughs> with a nice cold glass of beer. And if the angel of death doesn't come, I'm going to order a hamburger. <laughs> and this is a philosophy I took from my mother. My mother used to eat garlic, garlic, every night before she went to sleep. One night she forgot the garlic, and here I am. Let me explain it to this side. See, she ate, <laughs> she ate the garlic. You see, my father came to bed, and you know, one night she forgot. Never mind. OK. <clears throat> I said, Mom, why do you eat garlic every night? You know what she said? She said, if the angel of death comes tonight, I'll wake up and ask, who is it? The angel of death goes, I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> so we have now four tools, four attitudes I want you to take with you. Again, this is just awareness. Anyone you want to take with you. Laugh at yourself and breathe. Number two, stay hungry. Three. Stay foolish. Three, you've heard the sentence, mission impossible. Number three is mission possible, service, serving happiness. And number four is live every day as if it's your last, because one day you're going to be right. I think I have enough time. Yes. Number five, but don't leave. I've got a bonus for you. <laughs> number five is this. Remember I told you who wants to live a more uh, flourishing life, happier, healthier life? OK, I want to give you a sentence to say to everybody who asks you this question. And there's going to be a lot of people who are going to ask you this question. They're going to ask you, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? What's up? V. Gates. If you say this sentence to everybody who says, how are you, or asks you how you are, the cells in your brain will begin to change slowly over time. Trust me, this goes on. If you say this sentence, the cells in your body will begin to change over time. You'll start to think differently and look different. Your whole system will reorganize itself to serve you to be happier, serving happiness. Would you like to learn that sentence or not? Yes. A little bit more passion, OK? Yes. Would you like to learn that sentence or not? Yes. That's passion. Somebody comes over to you and says, hi, how are you? Alex, the answer is this. Now is my best moment because there is no other moment. And it's gone. Another one's gone. Another one's gone. So when is your best, most exciting, most significant moment in your life? When? Now. I can't hear you. When? Now. All you got is now. I say this to my neighbors. I make sure that everybody knows this when they ask me. On the bus or in the elevator, they say, Lenny, how are you? And I say, now is my best moment because there is no other moment. And they say to me, that means something's wrong with you. <laughs> Don't you read the news? 
My wife does not watch the news. She records the news. Then she watches it much later, comes to me and says, boy, am I glad that's over. <laughs> the past is history. The future, a mystery. All we have is the present. present. What is present? A gift. You give someone a present, you give a gift. If you're living in the present, you're living in the gift. How many people, if anybody here right now feels the gift, if you feel the gift right now, applaud. A little louder. Who feels the gift now? I got enough time for a bonus. Did I hear somebody say something? <laughs> Are you enjoying yourself so far? Because yes. yes. we're about to finish, and you can't get me again after this. You know, you have to call me. Um, <laughs> Lenny, come back. Um, I want you to do me a favor and start to dream. And don't go around with an editor in your head, a critic, when you say, you know what, I would love, I would love to, now nah, you can't do that. Or somebody says, you can't do that. OK, I want you to please dream and make your dreams become a reality. And I'm not just saying that. I'm going to do it for you right now. There's nothing here today that I said to you that you didn't get instruction exactly from me how to do it. Laughing at ourselves, being foolish. OK, I did it all because I want you to see it and think about it. And I want you to see right now and witness somebody who has a dream and makes that dream become a reality. Are you ready for this? I have a dream right now. And my dream is that I say to you, how are you? I envision in my mind's eye that all of you yell back with great passion, now is my best moment, because there is no other moment. And then I envision myself saying to you, Thank you, Google, for inviting me into your lives. And thank you for coming into mine. And then I envision all of you standing up <laughs> and giving me a standing ovation, <laughs> screaming, bravo, with whistles and screams. And then you sing to me. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, why is this dream important for me to come true? Because when I leave here, I'm going to call my wife. And I know exactly what she's going to ask me. Hi, how was it at Google? And I'm going to say these words to her, exactly. Darling, you won't believe this. At the end of my talk, Everybody stood up. <laughs> they gave me a standing ovation. You won't believe this. They screamed bravo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know what else? They sang to me, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I don't want to lie to her. So don't embarrass me. <laughs> OK, let's make this dream a reality. How are you? Now is my best moment, because there is no other moment. And thank you, Google, for inviting me into your life. And thank you for coming into mine. Get up. Bravo! Bravo! That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right on time. Boom. Questions? That's it? Oh, you, we... May have five minutes for questions, if anyone? Does anyone have any questions for, for Lenny? I 
guess not. Yes, what is your name? Uh, Vicky. Vicky, yes, Vicky. Mm -hmm. I have to stand here, Vicky, because the microphone is here. <laughs> What's the happiest moment of your life so far? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me again. What's the happiest moment of your life so far? Right now. <laughs> Let's keep doing this. <laughs> really. I, I can't think of any other moment with this. And I can't think of a happier moment than right now. Thank you for the question. Yes, yes. How do you keep your attitude like that every day? How do I keep this attitude every day? Um, in the morning, I won't get out of bed until I have thanked God for everything I have. I go through a tremendous list of perfect health, family, uh, friends, children, grandchildren. And I think if you do that every day, it's a, called an attitude of gratitude. I just simply won't get out of bed until I thank God for allowing me to take what she has given me and has helped me to give to you. To take my gifts, what I do best, what God has given me, so that I'm able to relate it to you, to give, for instance, today. So I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for the creativity. I'm thankful for my life. I'm thankful for everything. And I go through a whole list. And every night before I go to sleep, I go through this whole list again. And this keeps my attitude up and my feelings good, because I have a lot to be grateful for. And it's called attitude of gratitude, and I think that you all could do that. It's better than counting sheep, you know, before you go to sleep. You know, two, three. You know. Here comes a blessing, you know, this. And, and think, you'll find so many wonderful things, you know, about your life that you have that we take for granted that you can just give thanks for it. Okay? Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes? Just as a follow-up, in particularly difficult times, like any happens in any life, uh, difficult times, how do you uh, practice this? Like, how did I deal in difficult times? Very difficult times. Very difficult times. I had a lot of faith. I, I felt that somehow um, there was a certain belief that I was going to get through this. And in many times in my life, I think 100% of the time, when I really look back at the difficult times, I caused them. And the reason I caused them was because I had to learn a lesson. If I look back on my life, and I think of all the monsters I've met along the way, those monsters have been my best teachers. Those difficult moments have made me into the human being that I am today. Uh, and so without the difficult times, uh, I wouldn't have been able to be on this journey. And if I look back on it all, I created it. Every monster I created. And I learned through a movie I once saw called Shrek <laughs> that everybody, did you see Shrek? There's the, 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 when the, the donkey and Shrek come to take the princess and there's a dragon and the dragon is scaring everybody and breathing fire. And the only one that faces the dragon is the donkey. And he looks into her eyes. He says, oh, you're a girl dragon. And she goes. <laughs> That's the way I look at my dragons today. I try to find something beautiful, something exquisite about them, and turn those dragons into something lovely. He finally marries her, and they have dragon donkey children. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Really enjoyed it. Yes. Guys, there's also books if you want to uh, enjoy Lenny's humor more. There's books for sale. And otherwise, thanks for bringing some light into our afternoon. And, <laughs> okay, uh, my pleasure. It was very enjoyable. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
sign that properly. Lovely. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.